Okay, here we go. It's our last update before the season truly begins in the arena slash indoor football world. We might, there's going to be something, you're going to be seeing something different soon, you know, when it comes to, you know, the content and everything, but we'll announce that as the days go by here. Uh, but in any case, we got an update. The Arena Football Association has, a, has released their schedule today, and it, it, it is bad. It is a also a terrible schedule. Uh, we have some other schedules to go over here from other leagues, and some other general news going on. So, you know, we'll talk about the AFA first, because Wichita, the Wichita Forest, who got kicked out of the CAF, they are in the AFA. They showed up first on the North Texas Bowl schedule. They joined the AFA on February 7th. They moved into a new 1,000-seat uh, arena called the Wichita Heights Center. And the Amarillo Bedham, they are no longer on the AFA website, no longer appearing anywhere on any schedules. And they basically said, oh, we don't want to play this year because, you know, uneven amount of teams, which is a load of nonsense. Just... You can make this, you can make it work. So Amarillo, really, it's just a cover-up for some other reason, in my opinion. That's probably what it is, a cover-up for something else. So West Texas was like, Let, let's play three games in Amarillo, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Um, there was conflicting schedules, but again, the AFA released their schedule today. Um, it seems that the Texas Jets will have a home arena after being a travel team in 2021. Uh, Rio Grande Valley will be a travel team, which is not good. Not good at all. Some teams have a lot of non-league games. Some teams have none. Some teams play nine games. Some teams play eight. Rio Grande Valley plays seven. You know, it, it's just it's just not, not a good idea. And then you have the playoff structure, which still has dates to be determined as of this time because, and it seems like they're going to be on July 9th, at July 16th of the playoffs because of Magnolia State playing a non-league opponent on July the 2nd, which is stupid. So, you know, like Magnolia State has 11 games lined up. Wichita has 10 lined up. Uh, North Texas has 9. Rio Grande Valley, like I said, has 7. West Texas has 11 lined up, so, you know, a bunch of non-league opponents still, which is stupid. Like, and there's some familiar non-league opponents like the Arlington Longhorns that appear on the AFA schedule and then, you know, like Texas Jets, which somehow, again, like I'm still perplexed that they even have a whole arena. You know, but whatever, man. Whatever. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, rather, Texas, the Texas Jets do have nine games, excuse me. So, so a weird schedule, you know, with the whole most teams having nine games, some having eight, some having seven. That's kind of dumb to me. Uh, we will at the talk, we'll go on to the CIF here because there are some things, you know, from the CIF. Wyoming, the Mustangs have a non-league game. They didn't have a non-league game when the CIF released their updated schedule. They do have one now in the Dallas Prime. Rapid City. Signed Melissa Strother, a former player in the Women's National Football Conference, which I think is really cool. Um, there hasn't really been too many women's players in the indoor game, you know, on, you know, major I indoor teams and stuff like that. We're not talking about the X League or anything like that. We're talking about side into leagues that are for men. You know, we're talking, you know, leagues for men. We're not talking about the X League or anything like that because... You know, the X League is a dumpster fire in and of itself that doesn't know what it's doing. And that, that's a whole different story. We'll talk about that another time. Uh, but that that's just some interesting tidbits from the CIF. Let's go to the Arena Professional Football League now because, oh boy, another troublesome league here. You know, another splinter from the, a, from the AAL, which is basically going to die. Um, sad days for the AAL. We know, well, that, that, that we, we already talked about that. Early in February, we already talked about that. But the Jersey Flight, they call themselves the Ballers now, which, or rather the Ballas, which is stupid. Um, and the APFL released their schedule early in February, and it was just awful, just an awful, awful schedule release. 
Jersey, on the other hand, the Jersey flights now ballers, you know, have new owners apparently, have new have a new logo, and it looks terrible, and they proceed to leave the APFL. So, and it, it, it was like, it's a back and forth type thing because both sides are stating like, oh, well, something went wrong. They were being unprofessional with us. So, you know, both sides are arguing the same thing. And then the Vermont Brew joined the league from out of nowhere on February the 7th, which was insanity. Um, I'm lost. But the initial schedule release was awful because the Penn Union and Carolina Cowboys are travel teams. And I thought the APFL was supposed to have home arenas for everybody, but no, that was a lie. Jersey and West Michigan were initially scheduled to play six games. Charlotte was the only team that played seven. So there was something completely wrong here, and I don't know when the APFL is going to re-release their schedule, uh, but we'll hopefully have somebody figure it out because, you know, um, again, we, I am friends with some of the guys that are media reporters in the whole arena slash indoor circles, so, you know, we'll find out what the APFL does soon, but that's just what my notes have. The FCF, let's talk about that dumpster fire because it's a dumpster fire of its own because they have new jerseys, new logos for some of their teams. The NFT stuff has just been a disaster, an absolute dumpster fire. Again, you have bots and stuff buying NFTs on Discord, in the official FCF Discord, and it seems like they're building an arena in Pullman Yards in Atlanta, which is cool, but at the same time, that's it's gonna, it's, it's almost time for the season to begin, you know. Um, and then there's going to be more NFT t type teams like IBM Watson and Flair, based off an article that I had uh, read a couple a couple weeks back. And uh, y'all can go look for that article yourselves because there are some more. At, le at least I, f I think I found that out from the FCF Wikipedia actually, but. There's going to be more NFT type teams coming in the future, which is absolutely stupid. Um, so the NAL, really the biggest thing here, you know, we know that Mason Espinosa is coming back to Columbus. San Antonio seems to be playing in Freeman Coliseum, not the Alamo Dome. Freeman Coliseum, that's going to be where they'll be going. And then the IFL, let's, the elephant in the room is the IFL here because there's a lot that is going on here with the IFL right now, which is, um, this is huge, this is huge. You know, first off, the Midwest Division has been renamed to the East Division, which is stupid, just make it the United and Intense Conferences like it's supposed to be, but whatever, man, whatever. So, Spokane, that's really the biggest issue here, is Spokane. Are they going to be able to play? Sam Adams has owed money for quite some time now, and we do not know. Um, the, he has a deadline. He has a deadline of, what, February the 23rd? So, you know, when we update you all again later on in, in, in the first weekend of March, because we'll be back, you know, with our season preview and everything of the first week of March, um, we don't know what, what Spokane is going to do. We don't know, uh, because the season's about to start. And they're, they say they're committed to play. They say they're committed to play. They say they have, you know, things got together. But um, there's, a, there's a serious problem here, um, you know, because Spokane can say they can come out and say that they're playing, but you can't just announce stuff like, oh, well, we have no COVID restrictions, no masks, no nothing. Everybody can get in without a mask or restrictions or anything like that. That's not the priority here. The priority here is getting the money together to get your arena, get it together. And if you look at Vegas' home field, it looks absolutely beautiful. But Spokane, the Spokane situation is just on another level of, I don't even know how this is going to be resolved. It's going to have to happen quickly because, again, the season is right around the corner and we need to get it done. We need to get it done. You know, uh, so it sound it sounds like a season, but I mean, you know, they you know the public facilities district and Spokane have agreed that they're gonna play, but you know there's still there's still time, you know, for something to happen because you know, again, if things do not work out, 
it's Bulkhead's favorite. Things get kind of rough. Uh, but it, it's going to be a rough time. I'll say that right now. I'll say that right now. Because I don't think the IFL wants to modify this schedule, you know, with like a week or two to go before the season actually begins. I don't think they want to do that. So, you know, hopefully the agreement stays. That That's really the big thing here. That's really the big picture. Hopefully the agreement stays in place. Hopefully everything goes right this season. Hopefully we don't have any mid-season foldings or anything like that or nonsense like last year with Louisville. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a long season. It's going to be an exciting season. Um, and I cannot wait. Uh, February 27th, it's going to be a Sunday, and we're going to get the ball rolling with the CIF and their preseason non-league games. And then we're going to get the real madness coming back in full force on March the 12th. So, you know, I'll have some predictions for the season and everything coming up next week. Yes, that's right. Next week around like March the 3rd or 4th, we'll get we'll get we'll get it in. We're gonna get it in and we're gonna do this. So it's gonna be a long season ahead. I, I know. Um, there might be some changes, you know, on, on this front, but we're gonna do this. We're gonna make it through because you know it's gonna be an interesting summer. So, with that being said, I'm going to skedaddle, get on about it here, and we'll talk about the USFL and what they're doing tomorrow. So, see you soon, everybody. Take care. Have a good night.